Is the charging time on the Tesla on a long road trip as bad as some people think it is? Well, let's find out. After posting my last video, which was my road trip experience, there were a lot of great comments. And I want to thank everybody for taking the time to uh, post their comments, say nice things, uh, and really in general thanking me for posting and sharing my experience on YouTube. So again, thank you all so much. But as we all know, there are some bad apples out there. And there was one in particular that even though it was negative in nature, it got me to thinking a bit. So before we get on to the topic at hand, let's take a look at that comment. Here it is. A prime example of EV fanboyism run amok with severely clouded objectivity. Other Tesla owners, not fanboys, have done similar YouTube videos and they readily admitted that driving an ICE vehicle will get you there significantly faster. Now they drove 1,963 miles and all of their time intensive EV pit stops added eight hours to their trip. So your 4,000 plus mile road trips surely added 16 to 18 hours of additional trip time. Now, most people, when they take a long road trip to visit relatives or go on vacation, want to get their ASAP to start enjoying the reason they are driving. And the idea of having to stop so often because of the limited range of EVs and the very slow recharge times, not to mention the high price tag, is what keeps most people buying ICE vehicles. As many have noted, EVs just aren't there yet for the vast majority of consumers. Now, I normally don't address comments like these, but actually when I look at it and think about it, I don't consider it a negative comment because it's producing a positive result. And that is the topic of this video. So I wanna thank the person, whoever you are, for going and taking your time to write this comment, which seems a little negative, obviously, in some of the comments that you've made. However, that being said, I don't claim to know who you are. I don't claim to know who, what you're about or anything about you. But based on what I'm reading here, and again, I just want to say this, is that it's clear to me that you, number one, don't have an EV, right? You don't have an electric vehicle. Number two, that you just haven't embraced the EV revolution just yet. And that's fine. That's a choice that you've made. There are a lot of other people like me that have made the choice to embrace that revolution. And it's no doubt there are sacrifices that are made uh, when purchasing an EV car or an e electric, electric car over that of an ICE car. No doubt. And I would certainly not argue otherwise. Now, there was a little bit of name calling in there, or at least some people would consider it that. And that is that I was called an EV fanboy or a Tesla fanboy. Now, to be quite honest, I don't consider that an insult because I actually wear that title as a badge of honor. I mean, let's be honest, I have a YouTube channel that is centered around my car. So of course, I am going to put EVs and Teslas in a positive light. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to send a message and get the message out of just how great electric vehicles are. And in general, obviously, Teslas, really, when we want to get specific here. But I will admit that sometimes my judgment, my thoughts can be a bit clouded and it's comments like these that make you stop in your tracks and kind of think a bit. So again, thank you for your comment because again, this is the reason why I'm making this video. All right, now on to the topic at hand. I have no doubt that there are YouTubers out there that have posted videos of road trips that are similar to mine around 2000 miles one way and the supercharging times added eight hours to the trip. No doubt that that is the case. However, I'd also be willing to guess that that video or any of those videos were posted at least six months ago, if not longer. Because within the last six months, Tesla has made significant improvements to the charging times. The problem is I don't have the numbers to prove anything from last year's trip because I didn't document anything. But as I recall, and I remember, the charging times were clearly significantly slower than they were this last time I took this trip. Now, as I recall, a year ago, my charging times on that trip were anywhere on average between 35 and 50 minutes. 
most likely I didn't have any charging session less than 35 minutes. However, just a couple of weeks ago on that exact same trip, charging times were anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes, give or take on either end, but again, on average between 15 and 30 minutes. So clearly the times for charging are much faster. Tesla has made significant improvements as I mentioned, but that being said, yes, it is clear that when we're talking about refueling and putting energy back into the car, ICE vehicles still have a big advantage over EVs. Let's start by taking a look at the actual route. Now I started in Temple, Texas and the final destination was Redding, California. With a detour up to the Grand Canyon, the trip came out to around 2100 miles. Now according to a better route planner, estimated driving time without any stops was 34 hours and 26 minutes. Estimated charge time for the whole trip is 4 hours and 43 minutes. This was making sure I had at least 20% battery left upon arriving at each supercharger, hardly the 8 hours reported by others. However, the real world charge time is higher based on my experience. And one thing I made sure I did was to take a snapshot of the screen upon starting the charging session and again after I was finished so it could accurately document my charging times. And here's what I came up with. My total charging time was about one hour over a better route planner's estimate at five hours and 50 minutes. Now I could have easily cut that extra hour by only charging 30 minutes in Flagstaff and also in Reno. Both of those charging sessions were the longest at about one hour. Now here's the reason why I charge for an hour in Flagstaff. And if you watch my previous video, you've already seen this. All right, so now I'm at the US Supercharger in Kingman. No, actually not Kingman, I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, and uh, this is where I'm gonna give myself as much of a charge as I can, maybe even if I can get it close to full. Uh, because going up to the Grand Canyon, 79 miles from here uh, to get to the South Rim parking lot. Now, I checked uh, charge point and I checked uh, kind of the plug share and it showed there are several charging stations there, level two. So if I'm lucky at about a 300 mile to 310 mile charge, I should, if I'm lucky, have a still about 200 mile charge when I'm there. If we're at the Grand Canyon for a couple of hours and plugged into a level two charger, I could probably get up to somewhere between 260 and 280 miles back into the car with a two mile, with a two hour charge. Uh, because it's about 179 miles from the South Rim parking lot to Kingman, Arizona. So if I don't have to go back to Flagstaff, kind of backtrack to get charged up and then go to Kingman, that would be great. So that's kind of my goal at this point. I'm going to get as much of a charge as I can within 45 minutes to an hour. So we got up to 310 miles on the charge here. We have been waiting for uh, close to an hour. Um, so we made pretty good time here. Aiden finally got up. We're ready to go to the Grand Canyon. Hour and a half drive. Let's hope we can find a decent charger when we get there. We'll keep you posted. The best part is the fact that a supercharger with 12 stalls is being constructed just south of the park entrance. Now I also charged for about an hour in Reno, but only needed about 30 minutes since I still had about 125 miles on my battery once I got home. So here's where I get some hesitation talking about this next category in this topic. Comparing gas stops can be very tricky because it all depends on the dynamics of your trip. Are you traveling alone? Is your spouse with you? Do you have kids with you? And the answer to these questions can shave or add minutes or even hours to your overall trip. Now, in order to try to make this as fair as possible, and I want to stress the word try. So in order to try to make this as fair as possible, I started a survey on both Facebook and Twitter. And I asked the question, if you're taking a long road trip in an ICE vehicle, on average, how long is a fuel stop? Now that would include the possibility of going on a restroom break as well, maybe getting a snack or something to drink. And the options I offered were five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. A majority of the votes on both surveys, both Twitter and Facebook, said 15 minutes. And the runner up was 10 minutes. So what I decided to do is break down both of those times. 
So now the next question is, how many times do you need to fuel up in an ICE car on a 2100 mile road trip? Now this can also be very tricky because there are a lot of different kind of cars out there. Some are much more fuel efficient than, than others. So what I did is I tried to kind of average it all out based on cars that have good fuel efficiency and other cars that don't have as good of fuel efficiency. And the best number that I could come up with is that on average, you can get about 450 miles per tank. Now this is also taking into account the fact that most people don't bring it down to empty before filling up. And usually you'll have about one to maybe even upwards of three gallons of gas before filling up. So let's do the math. Dividing 2100 by 450 brings us to 4.6. So we'll round that up to about five fueling stops. Now, before you get up in arms about that decision, keep watching because you'll see how in the end, it all evens out. At 10 minutes per fueling stop, that would put us at 50 minutes total for the entire trip. At 15 minutes, that would put us at a total of one hour and 15 minutes also for the entire trip. Now at first glance, we have a significant difference. Based on the numbers alone, the charging stops for the Tesla adds almost six more hours to the trip compared to the one hour for fueling up a gas car. However, what the numbers for the gas car don't factor in are needed breaks between fueling stops, restroom breaks, and meals in particular. So to be fair, we're going to add five meal stops at 30 minutes each, since it will take two and a half days to make this trip. Now it may take less time than that for many people to stop for a meal, but a restroom break here and there will make up for that. So now we have two and a half hours added to the trip when driving an ICE car, putting the grand total with fueling stops at approximately three hours and 30 minutes. Now, when you put the numbers side by side, the ICE car is still the clear winner, but only by two and a half to three hours. Now I realize that this video is going to open up Pandora's box big time because we've got basically some numbers from an EV that are fairly accurate and were well documented. But the numbers for the ICE car are purely speculative. I mean, we're talking about how long it actually takes to fuel up the car, how many stops you may have to make in between, uh, any kind of restroom breaks, uh, whether or not you've, how long you stop to eat a meal. Again, purely speculative. And really, the only way to get an accurate comparison would be to go on a road trip with two cars, one ICE car, and one EV. So I want to go on the record by stating that I am well aware of the fact that the charging times in an EV are going to add at least twice as much time, if not a little bit more than that of an ICE car during a long road trip, as far as fueling is concerned. And if that is an issue for you, then I don't recommend an EV. And I suggest waiting until those charging times go down. But here's what I have to say to all that. And I think anyone who owns an EV will most likely agree with me that the advantages of owning an EV far outweigh the disadvantages to that of an ICE car, including this topic we're talking about. Call me an EV fanboy or better yet, a Tesla fanboy, but I will plan all of my future road trips in my Tesla Model 3 knowing that it will take longer to get to my destination than that of an ICE car. Not using a drop of gas? Well, that's all I need. And the money I save? Well, that's icing on the cake. And on that topic, be sure to watch my next video because I'm going to break down the fuel costs of driving my Tesla Model 3 compared to the actual fuel costs of an iced car. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a like or a thumbs up. And better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm always trying to get that EV message out there. And if you're thinking about buying a Tesla Model S, X, or 3, be sure to use my referral code as you'll get 1,000 miles of free supercharging. I'll be sure to post that link at the bottom of this video. And until then, be sure to stay positively charged.